Hello guys, Croft is here, a 2022 Prey is the fifth installment in the Predator franchise that features the first human predator hunt and reveals the origin of the flintlock pistol that is shown at the end of Predator 2. So today I'll explain the feral predator and go over Prey, the prequel to four other predator movies set in 1719 and I'll discuss how it fits in the alien vs predator timeline introduced in the crossovers. This Predator prequel uncovers a new type of Yaucha, the Feral Predator, that is quite different from other Predators in terms of physical appearance, weapons, invisible camouflage, and the tech. Prey has many homage moments to the original Predator movie and includes some historically accurate elements with references to Native American lore and it actually may be the best Predator movie since the original Predator, or even the best installment in the entire franchise for some people. In the movie, the feral predator seems to have the task to collect the skull of the most dangerous species on planet Earth, which is humans, however instead, he may actually become their prey. The movie centers around Naru, a talented Comanche warrior who wants to rise above what her culture prepared for her and establish herself as a hunter, but in order to do so, she might have to kill one of the most dangerous predators in the universe. In September of 1719, Naru, who's been trained as a healer, has aspirations of becoming a renowned hunter like her brother Tabe. While practicing throwing a tomahawk, Naru notices a deer and tries to kill it, but without success. Her hunt is interrupted by a shattering sound and flames of a predator spacecraft that is dropping off the feral Yaucha. Naru calls what she saw a thunderbird and thinks it is a sign that she is ready to prove herself as a hunter through a ritual called Kutamiya, which is a hunt of something that is hunting you. In the Native American mythology, the thunderbird is a legendary supernatural being that is believed to generate thunder by flapping its wings and lightning by flashing its eyes. The predator ship and its trail do look like a weird bird, which makes us wonder about the origin of other myths and legends in different cultures. Back in the village, Naru desires to be a hunter are met with resistance from her mom, who wants her to be a healer, but Naru seems to be very determined about her pursuit and pledges to become a hunter one day. Later, Naru joins a search team following the tracks of the mountain lion that has mauled and taken one of the tribe's members. Naru and other Comanche pass through many beautiful and untouched forests and lakes, which fully submerges the audience in the world of nature, where every animal is either the predator or the prey. The mountain lion appears to have been scared off by an unknown creature who explores Earth's fauna and gathers the skulls of numerous local predatory animals. Since it is the first feral predator hunt on Earth, the predator examines the local fauna, killing increasingly dangerous species. Collecting Earth's dangerous animals is contrasted with other predator movies that happen in later periods where the predator goes directly for humans. Another interesting thing to notice is that the snake is able to see the ouches since it has the same thermal vision as the predator. Predator's exploration of Earth's animals seems to confirm that it is his first visit on Earth or possibly the first ever trip to Earth with a predator species. On the contrary, Alien vs Predator crossovers state that the Yauches visited Earth for thousands of years and used it as hunting grounds. Therefore, some predator clans may have visited Earth way before the Federal Predator. It is still unclear if Alien vs Predator crossovers are included in the Predator timeline. Initially, after the first two Predator movies, the studio decided to go ahead and merge Predator with the Alien universe. However, later they reverted back to the standalone Predator timeline separate from the Alien. For that reason, officially, Prey is the fifth installment in the franchise, but at the same time, some directors who make Predator movies like Shane Black still consider Alien included in the Predator universe. But back to the movie, the search party rescues their wounded tribe member and Naru manages to stop the bleeding by giving him the orange flower, which lowers the temperature and slows down his heart rate. Tabe stays behind to locate the mountain lion and finish the hunt. 
At the same time, Naru finds a skinned snake and the footprint of the feral predator and goes to her brother to warn him about an unknown monster. However, Tabe disregards Naru's warnings and decides to deal with the lion first. Naru convinces her brother to let her join the hunt, use this opportunity for her kutamiya and kill the lion, finally proving herself as a hunter. She successfully baits the lion to a tree branch by posing as prey, but right before committing to a killing blow, she gets distracted by a flash of light, stumbles and falls down from the tree, knocking herself unconscious. Naru wakes up in her village and her mom explains that the true purpose of Kutamiya is survival and not demonstrating the hunting skill. Tabe returns to the village with the decapitated lion and the chief with the tribe honor him for his heroic feat. But they did not give any credit to Naru for coming up with the plan and actually striking the lion to the side right before she fell. The following day, while all women go to one direction to forage food, upset Naru literally goes the opposite direction, sneaks away from the village with her dog Sari and follows the track of the feral Yaucha, who just collected another trophy skull of a grey wolf after a gruesome encounter. The feral predator brings the wolf's head in his cave and removes all the flesh with the acidic disintegrator gas, adding another earth predator in his collection. In the meantime, Naru modifies her axe by making it retractable using a thread. The next day, she stumbles upon a field of skinned buffaloes, which hints on the similarity between the Yaucha and the fur traders, both of which tend to skin their prey and hunt for sport. The feral predator follows Naru's footsteps and also discovers dead buffaloes along with some tracks left by fur traders, which ignites his interest in this new species that he hasn't seen yet, humans, who are now the new worthy prey to hunt. Naru and the feral predator are very similar in a way that they both try to prove themselves as hunters. She is trying to complete her kutamiya and the predator is probably on its way to achieve the blooded status. While wandering around the forest, Naru accidentally gets stuck in the mud but manages to escape, which is a tribute to the original predator movie where the mud basically saved Dutch's life. Naru doesn't realize that the feral predator is actually following her tracks and although the mud seems to have slowed him down, he is about to catch her up. Later in the day, Naru sees a grizzly near the river and after an unsuccessful attempt to kill him, the bear quickly corners her in a beaver dam. Interestingly, the reason her arrow missed the target is because the string got wet in the mud, something her brother Tabe warned her about previously. We crawled through the mud my bowstring got ruined and the bear tries to reach Naru, but the feral predator sneaks right behind him and engages into a hand fight with the beast, seeing him as a worthy challenge. Bears are extremely strong and encountering them in the wild is terrifying. A bear would easily rip a human apart without even trying. However, the feral Yaucha manages to wrestle with the beast and knocks the bear out with a single punch, which really showcases how overwhelmingly strong this predator is. The Yaucha raises the bear over his head, lifting at least a thousand pounds, which may put the feral predator very close to the upgrade predator, since we've never seen these feats of strength by Yaucha in any other predator movies. The bear's blood covers over his transparent camouflage and we get a first glimpse of the feral predator's bio helmet, which is very unique and appears to be made out of bone. Naru manages to escape by swimming down the river and joins a group of Comanche hunters who were sent to bring her back to the village. She tells them about a terrifying monster that she saw, calling him Muppets, which is another creature from Native American mythology that is known to be a giant human-eating owl. Also referred to as Pia Muppets, this creature is more obscure than other Native American deities and is often described as Big Cannibal Owl that carries a cottonwood tree for a cane and a basket to kidnap misbehaving children. Since Naru refers to the predator as Muppets, who is often used as a boogeyman in kids' stories, her tribe members don't believe her and their dispute eventually turns into a fight, which ends with them overpowering her and dragging her back to the village. 
The feral predator observes the entire scene from above, realizing that Naru is unarmed unlike other tribe members, which makes them worthy targets. The Yaucha kills the first Comanche with the bolt gun that fires self-targeting bolts that are guided by the biomask laser system. The bolt gun seems to be the predecessor of the plasma cannon that also has triple laser sight but shoots plasma blasts. One Comanche hits the predator with an arrow, glitching the invincibility cloak and we get to see the feral predator in full display. The feral predator is very unique not only in terms of weapons but also in his physical appearance which is likely a result of him evolving in a different environment than previously known Yaucha. The distinct appearance is likely due to the creature's unique background, presumably originating from the hotter hemisphere of the Yaucha Prime, possibly making him a desert predator. On top of that, he has a distinct bone biomask unlike anything we've seen before, which looks particularly terrifying and indicates that bones may have an even greater significance to this predator variant. Bones are not only highly valued for feral yauchas, but they also appear to be a staple in their diet, which is the reason this predator has bigger bone-crushing mandibles. The Yaucha decapitates the other Comanche with a spear while Naru escapes again and hides in the grass field with another tribe member, which may be an homage to the katana fight scene in Predators of 2010. Naru and the other Comanche converse the grass field but her friend gets brutally killed by the Yaucha, while Naru gets caught in a bear trap. The feral predator realizes that she doesn't pose any danger and lets her live since there will be no sport in killing her. However, he finds a new target which is the fur hunters, the same group that killed the buffaloes and who now have Naru as their prisoner. The next scene showcases the French fur traders camp and we meet Raphael Dolini, the interpreter whose pistol we see at the end of Predator 2. Raphael Dolini's character is actually different in the Predator comics, which we'll get to later in the video. On a historical note, France played a pretty big part in colonization of the American continent and although they were eventually overpowered by the British, even today there are approximately 10 million French speakers in North America, with French being the official language in some Canadian provinces like Quebec. In the movie, the French are actually aware of the feral predator and Raphael asks Naru what she knows about the monster. After seeing that she's unwilling to cooperate, the French threaten to kill her brother whom they captured earlier and make a huge cut on his chest. The French appear to want to capture the predator as well, so they use both Naru and her brother as bait to lure him without realizing that the Yaucha would not kill somebody who's not armed. The French attack the Yaucha as his leg gets stuck in a bear trap, however, the feral predator kills one after the other, seemingly enjoying the brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat. The predator breaks the trap with a cut clamp and kills a man with a netball which doesn't have any acid coating and seems to be an older version of the net gun that we've seen previously. As other Frenchmen fire at him, the predator blocks the bullets with a retractable wrist shield which has extremely sharp edges and can also be used as a weapon. After killing most of the fur traders with wrist blades, the predator finishes the remaining few with landmines that emerge from the wrist gauntlet. In other predator movies, the wrist gauntlet can be used as a bomb or even as a nuclear bomb like in the original predator. However, in Prey, the gauntlet is more primitive and can only spawn three landmines that are powerful but their radius of destruction is nowhere near as large as in later versions. While the feral predator is busy killing the fur hunters, Naru and her brother cut the rope and run to the French camp to rescue the dog and get some provisions. While using a bear trap to cut the rope, Naru says that she's smarter than beavers who often sacrifice a limb to get away. Later in the movie, it is Naru's intelligence, not strength or brute force that will allow her to outsmart the predator on every step. 
the oval bag on the predator's back contains a medkit as shown in the next scene where both the feral predator and Naru patch their wounds, which is another way the movie shows the similarity between the two. Earlier, both of them found tracks of fur traders near skinned buffaloes, and later in the movie, Naru attacks the predator from a tree, something that the Yaucha prefer to do. Then, a badly injured Raphael Dolini reaches the camp and asks Naru to help him in exchange for teaching her how to use the flintlock pistol. Raphael's leg has been cut off, so Naru gives him the orange flower seen previously to slow the bleeding, which also lowers his body temperature. At the same time, the predator reaches the camp and Naru hides while Adolini pretends to be dead. The predator gets really close to Adolini, but doesn't seem to notice him, that's when Naru realizes that the orange herb makes you invisible to the monster. But unfortunately, the Yaucha steps on Adolini's injured leg, causing him to scream and kills him. As Naru's dog, Sari, runs at the predator, Tabe sneaks behind him on a horse and hits his head, snatching off the biomask. And we finally see the feral predator's face for the first time, which looks intimidating and quite ugly. As Naru distracts the predator, Tabe impales him with his own telescoping spear that punctures through his entire body, which surprisingly doesn't kill the Yaucha and barely slows him down. As Tabe inflicts more and more damage to the predator, the Yaucha activates the invincibility cloak and impales Tabe from behind with his wrist blades. Naru freezes in complete shock as the predator approaches her for his next kill. However, on his last breath, Tabe manages to distract the Yaucha for a few seconds, allowing Naru to escape. Just like earlier in the movie, Naru injured the lion right before falling off the tree and weakened it, which allowed Tabe to finish the animal. In the same way, Tabe also inflicted a major wound on the feral predator, which will massively help Naru in the final battle with the monster. Interestingly, the relationship between Naru and Tabe mimics the one between Dutch and Dylan. In the original Predator movie, Dylan has a certain degree of authority over Dutch, just like Tabe is above Naru in the hunting hierarchy. Also, just like Dylan sacrificed himself so that Dutch can escape, Tabe does the same thing for Naru. Later in the day, Naru comes by a river to wash her hands, totally defeated by the brutal murder of her brother, and she notices the leader of the fur traders nearby. The same voyager who tortured her and her brother somehow managed to survive. Overwhelmed by hatred, she almost shoots him with the pistol, but then realizes that she can use him as bait to kill the monster that took her brother's life. Naru knocks out the French voyager and cuts off his leg using the cut clamp that she recovered from one of the Yaucha victims. She hands him a rifle that is not loaded to lure in the predator and consumes the orange flower. The feral predator decapitates the voyager and as he's celebrating the kill, Naru shoots him in the head with the pistol, which still doesn't kill him but knocks off the creature's mask. Naru picks up the mask and runs in the forest to prepare for the final battle. She uses the voyager's leg to lure the predator in the spot that gives her the advantage. Naru also figures out that the Yaucha targets his prey with the biomask that guides the bolts, which is a feature she plans to exploit. As the predator approaches, she jumps on him from a tree, inflicting multiple blows with the tomahawk. He throws the spear at Naru, but barely misses as her dog attacks him. The amount of damage the feral predator is able to take is truly surprising. He was punctured all the way through with his own spear, received countless arrows and was shot straight in the head and it barely affected him, which illustrates the durability and the savageness of this Yaucha variant. Another subtle detail is that the feral predator's blood is of a brighter shade of green than the Yaucha's blood in previous movies, which can be an additional proof that this variant evolved in a different environment than other predators. Despite all these wounds, the feral predator jumps from tree to tree, chasing Naru and tries to hit her with the wrist blades, but misses, causing the blades to get stuck in the tree trunk. 
Naru strikes him with the spear, but as the Yaucha blocks the attack with the wrist shield, the Predator's hand gets cut off, which is something that happens in almost every Predator movie. Using this brief moment of hesitation, Naru is about to pierce him in the chest, but the Yaucha retracts the spear, stifling the strike. The Predator uses the sharp edges of his shield as an offensive weapon and nearly cuts Naru's head off, but she manages to push herself in between two stones, blocking the blades. Using his overwhelming strength, the fellow Predator cuts through the stone with the wrist shield getting closer and closer to Naru's neck. However, she breaks one of his mandibles and stabs it in his shoulder. Then Naru inflicts multiple strikes with her tomahawk, wraps the rope around the Predator's neck and drags him in the mud in the spot where she prepared to use his projectile weapon against him. The Yaoche emerges and points the bolt gun at her, thinking that his biomask is lost and far away. He doesn't realize that as he's aiming at Naru, the self-targeting lasers of the biomask are pointing right to his head. Once the Predator shoots the bolts and they miss Naru, they are redirected by the lasers to his skull and ultimately kill the Yaucha. Naru quotes her brother's final words, this is as far as you go, no more, this is it, as the Predator dies, becoming her prey. Naru cuts off the Predator's head and marks her face with his bright green blood. She brings the monster's head to the village where she's greeted by her tribe that celebrates her achievement and grants her the hunter status. By killing the feral predator, Naru completes the Kutamiya ritual by making the predator her prey and proving once again that human might be the most dangerous species in the universe. Naru gives Rafael Adelini's pistol to the chief and she finally smiles, enjoying the victory. At the end of Prey, the Adelini's pistol ends up in the hands of the tribe chief, however in Predator 2, the pistol is in the possession of Greyback, which means that it is not the end of the pistol's journey. As teased in the mid-credits, three Yaucha ships approach the Comanche lands, implying that in the next prequel, possibly Prey 2, the fighting between Native American tribes and the Yaucha will continue, which would result in the pistol ending up in Predator's hands. However, the story of the Flintlock pistol is actually different in the Dark Horse comics. According to the comic book version, Raffaello Dolini was the French captain of a pirate galleon, as opposed to the French interpreter in Prey. Adolini encountered a Yaucha who starts slaughtering the crew that rebelled against the captain. Raphael briefly joins the Predator to kill the rebels who betrayed him, and at the end it's only him and the Predator Greyback left. Raphael engages in a battle with the Yaucha, but one of the surviving crew members shoots him in the back. Moments before dying, Adolini gifts his personal flintlock pistol to Greyback, earning the respect of the Yaucha. In the comics, Adolini's last words were, take it, which is the exact same phrase that Greyback says to Glover as he gives him the pistol as a trophy for defeating Ghost Predator in a fair fight. Okay. So, Raphael Adolini in the comics is a completely different character than in the movie, which also results in a different origin story of the Flintlock Pistol. In general, Prey is a type of predator movie that fans wanted for a long time, a movie that focuses on the hunt and has the same feel as best films in the franchise. The entire movie can be viewed as one big test for Naru, who completes the Kutamiya and learns that the true purpose of the ritual is to survive, which actually reflects the true behavior of predators in the wild who only kill in order to eat. Thank you guys for watching, let me know in the comments what are your thoughts about this movie. Also, like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more content. My name is Croft and I'll see you in the next video.